If you want to know more about ancient history, like the ancient structures and the ancient inventions, theories surrounding the ancient world, ancient queens, or human evolution, then I suggest you subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. And if you do like my work, maybe consider becoming a Patreon or a channel member. As we all know, the ancient Americas were incredibly rich, not just in their variety of cultures spanning over many millennia, but they were rich as well when it comes to their art, and not to forget all the golden splendor. But most burials that have been discovered in the Americas were looted by grave robbers before they were discovered by the archaeologists and excavated, so... much of it is lost. However, the burials near Sipan house the richest burial ever discovered in the entirety of the Americas. The burial of the Lord of Sipan, or in Spanish, El Señor de Sipan. My name is Kaylee, and in collaboration with the Ancient Americas channel here on YouTube, I'm going to tell you everything about the Mochi burials that were discovered in Sipan. If you want to know more about the Mochi culture from ancient Peru, I highly suggest checking out the video on the Ancient Americas channel. I'll put a card in the upper right corner for you, and there's a link in the description down below as well as in the pinned comments. So approximately a thousand years before the Incas became the rulers of the Peruvian lands, there was the Mochi culture. And this culture left behind some of the most incredible riches in gold and art and structures, including the richest burials in the Americas. So first, let's take a quick look at the location of the burials. They were discovered in Huacarajada, which is located close to the coast, near the town of Sipan, in the Lambayeque Valley in northern Peru. So the Huacarajada is a monument that consists of two small adobe pyramids and a low platform. One of these pyramids and the platform were built by the Mochi culture around 300 CE. The other pyramid, however, was built by a different culture later on around 700 CE. Huacas seem to have been very important by the South American cultures, including the Mochi culture. Huaca is the term for an ancient sacred site. This could have been a natural location, like for instance a rock, or created monuments by the ancient people. And sometimes they would create a monument near such a naturally occurring rock, <laughs> you know. Some wakas had monuments where priests would held ceremonies and rituals, like for instance, the ceremony of the sun at Cusco. Many wakas were created in the form of mud bricks and they usually were between 30 and 40 meters in height. They were created as early as 3000 BCE and kept being created by the cultures living in the Peruvian lands up until the Spanish arrived in 1532 CE. We know that a lot of huacas were looted by the Spanish, and this did not only occur during the conquest of the Inca lands, but this continued to occur long after the lands were conquered as well. The Spaniards melted down the gold they retrieved from looting the huacas, and they were really quite diligent in their ransacking of these sacred sites. Thankfully, however, not all huacas were looted, although this wasn't a known fact because up until the 1980s, we weren't even aware of a waka that was nearly untouched. This all changed in 1987, when looters started to dig at Huacarajada and they discovered several golden objects, but they got into a disagreement and this eventually led to the discovery being reported to the local police. The police then went to the site, raided it, and recovered a number of items and the local chief of police then contacted Dr. Walter Alva. Dr. Walter Alva, for those who don't know, is a Peruvian archaeologist who specializes in the studying and excavating of the ancient Machi culture and their sites, who used to live in the northern Peruvian lands, as the video made by Ancient Americas will tell you. So yeah, go watch that video. You could come back later or you can watch this one and then watch that one. Just watch both. Dr. Walter Alva arrived at the station shortly after he was tipped as time seemed to be of the essence and the police presented him with a pure gold face with turquoise eyes wrapped in paper. 
two giant peanuts made of gold and a golden cat with teeth made of shell with the expression of an angry snarl. Never before were items like these discovered during excavations in Peru and all these items came from the same one location, the Huacarajada near Sipan. But as you can imagine, word spread fast about a discovery as unique as this one. So by the next morning, when Dr. Alva traveled to the site with a team of researchers and a group of policemen, it was already filled with locals who were digging for treasure with their shovels. So yeah, stop digging. Dr. Walter Alva and his team of researchers started their excavations officially on April 1st, 1987, and he and his team discovered the royal tomb of the Lord of Sipan later in 1987. The first thing the team did when they started their excavations was look at the looter's hole and see what else would, could be found there. The looters had targeted a section on the low platform between the two pyramids, and as Dr. Alva and his team were clearing out the rubble that they left behind, they immediately discovered multiple machi culture objects. As you can imagine, it's unclear how much the looters took from the site, and this will most likely remain unknown until the end of time. But there does seem to be an unknown quantity of items in the possession of an Italian private collector who's based in Lima, in Peru. The researchers kept digging and adjacent to the looter's hole they discovered an immense cache of 1137 ceramic mochi pots. This was their first major discovery during this excavation. But it only got better. As they kept digging down, they stumbled upon the skeletal remains of a seated man. And this struck Dr. Alva as quite odd, as machi culture burials are usually placed lying down on their backs. But what was even more strange was the fact that not only this person had been left in a sitting position, his feet were removed as well. It seems really quite strange to remove the feet of the person you are burying, but there seemed to have been a good reason why the people burying him had done this. Underneath the body of this seated man, the team discovered a tomb, and this tomb was still sealed shut, which indicated that it had never been touched and the samples taken from inside were radiocarbon dated to approximately 250 CE. Dr. Alva believed that the feet of the seated man were most likely cut off to ensure that he would never be able to leave his post guarding the tomb and its contents. In the center of the tomb lay a wooden coffin which is the very first of its kind to have been discovered in America. And in this wooden sarcophagus, they discovered the skeletal remains of a man adorned in full royal regalia. A golden crescent headdress, a golden face mask, three sets of golden earrings inlaid with turquoise, two golden necklaces hung around his neck. Both necklaces were made of 10 golden peanuts and 10 silver peanuts the same kind of peanut actually that was recovered by the police earlier. A pure gold warrior shield weighing nearly a kilogram was worn on his body, just like pectoral shields made of shell, stone and bone. He wore feathered ornaments and banners of gilded metal and these banners were all adorned with a central figure who was positioned with stretched out arms, seemingly begging for attention. The body of the Lord of Sipan was covered by multiple blankets with ornate gilded copper platelets. And in his right hand, he held what seemed to be a scepter made of gold in the shape of an inverted pyramid. On his feet, he wore copper sandals. The discovery of his body adorned in all these riches rivaled the discovery of the tomb of Pharaoh Tutankhamun by Howard Carter in the 1920s. Because finding an untouched tomb filled with riches like these is absolutely unique in the world of archaeology. The Mochica ruler is estimated to have reached the age of 30 when he died, somewhere between 240 and 310 CE. And he seemed to have been approximately 163 centimeters in height. So above his head and below his feet were the skeletal remains of two young females between the ages of 15 and 25 and on either side of him the remains of two men who were most likely warriors. It seemed that the women placed with him were 
actual reburials. Blitter, blitter. It seemed that the women placed with him in the tomb were reburials, although it's thought that these women were at one point his wives, and it seems that they have died sometime before the Lord of Sipon, and after the Lord of Sipon died, they were placed with him to rest with him eternally or accompany him in the afterlife, whatever they believed in. In the tomb, the remains of a dog and two llamas were discovered as well. And these actually seem to have been slaughtered right before placed inside the tomb. I'm really happy I'm not that dog. <laughs> or those two llamas. So why do we call this person the Lord of Sipan? We know that the Machi culture did not leave any writings because they never developed a writing system. Although they did paint their history on ceramics. The man inside the tomb seemed to have been a very important figure because he was buried with a hoard of riches. Anthropologist John Verano assessed the body and discovered a lack of wear to the teeth of the Lord of Sipan. And this actually implies that he ate a special diet and the length of his body, 163 centimeters, 163 centimeters corroborates this. It's thought that the Lord may have died during a famine, although, as you can imagine, without any writings, this is actually a very educated guess. The ceramics inside the tomb do tell a story of who this man used to be. Because of the painted history on the ceramics, the researchers were able to reconstruct some of the rituals, and it actually helped identifying the men buried here. Of course, this was compared to the royal regalia with which this man was buried and the other iconographic depictions that were discovered inside the tomb. The researchers and Dr. Alva concluded that the man buried here was a high-ranking Mochi warrior priest or a lord. In his time, he would have been seen as half god, half man. And it's even possible that he was seen as the ruler of the Lambayek Valley, a very mighty pre-Inca aristocrat ruler who in modern times is known as the Lord of Sipan or in Spanish, El Señor de Sipan. So inside the tomb were five niches in the walls with another 211 pieces of pottery. It's believed that some of these would have contained food and drink offerings. But the tomb of the Lord of Sipan wasn't the only incredible discovery in this area. About a year after the discovery of the Lord of Sipan, another tomb was discovered nearby. This tomb is named Tomb 2, which is very anticlimactic if you ask me, although the tomb of the Lord of Sipan is actually just called Tomb 1. This tomb, Tomb 2, dates from the same time period as that of the Lord of Sipan, approximately from 250 CE. So this tomb contained the body of a man with a headdress that featured an owl with spread out wings and he held a copper cup in his right hand. He wore a strange necklace made of metal with small golden pendants in the shape of human faces with a variety of expressions and the man had one pair of ear spools. So even though this was another burial filled with riches, it wasn't as elaborate as the riches from the tomb of the Lord of Sipan. The man in tomb 2 was buried with multiple individuals as well, although the people in his tomb were arranged in a different manner and one of the people inside his tomb had his feet cut off, which could have indicated that this was his guard. It's possible. Although, this individual with his feet cut off was placed inside a coffin with four gourd vessels, a feathered ornament and a copper headdress. Inside the tomb of Tomb 2 were two women, although none of the women were placed inside a coffin. One was faced up and the other was faced down. It's believed that the women were wrapped in a textile shroud when they were placed inside the tomb. The woman on the left of the man was buried with an elaborate copper headdress. This one was similar to that of one of the women who was discovered in the tomb of the Lord of Sipan. This is actually an indication that these women came from a similar social rank. The man in Tomb 2 has been identified as a priest, based on the collection of artifacts and the regalia he was wearing. 
So when looking at the ceramics and their iconography, it seems that this priest would have collected the blood from the sacrificial victims to ceremonially feed to the Lord, making this priest only second in status to the Lord. The Wakarajara site has six known phases of construction and both these tombs are contemporary with the sixth phase, the final phase of this pyramid. That is, of course, the older pyramid and not the later built pyramid in 700 CE. This all predates that. Later on, about 5 meters below the surface layer of tombs 1 and 2, the researchers discovered a third tomb. This tomb was beneath 16 layers of extraordinary ornaments and clothing of the finest quality, and they discovered a body beneath all of this. This body belonged to a strong man, predating the men in both tomb 1 and 2. Skeletally, his body was actually healthier than that of the Lord of Sipan, and it was believed that he was an expert warrior. His possessions showed a similar high rank as the Lord of Sipan, and DNA analysis actually showed that this man in tomb 3 was related to the Lord of Sipan through the matriarchal line. This led researchers to believe that the man in tomb 3 was the father of the Lord of Sipan, and they gave him the name the Old Lord of Sipan. The Old Lord's tomb was much more modest than the first tomb that they discovered, the one of the Lord of Sipan. There were no niches and he was not placed inside a wooden coffin. He was buried with only one woman and yet another footless man again interpreted as his guard. They really liked to cut off the feet of men, these machi people. That's one thing for sure. <laughs> but what is quite peculiar is that tomb number three contained the finest metalwork found in the entire area, even better quality than the metalwork discovered with the Lord of Sipan. A lot of the pieces in this tomb were thin hammered plates of gold, gilded copper and alloys. And there are, of course, as you can imagine, some most notable items. Among these is a gold figurine of a mochi warrior, which was found above the old Lord of Sipan's nose. This figurine is only 3.8 centimeters in height, which is approximately that size. And it was holding a shield and a club and he was wearing turquoise inlaid earplugs, a turquoise shirt, a movable nose ornament, and an owl headdress with tiny movable platelets. This owl headdress on the figurine is very similar to that of the priest that was discovered in tomb number two. The old Lord of Sipan was covered in golden armor adorned with intricate jewelry, just like the Lord of Sipan from tomb number one. The jewelry on the old lord was held together with very fine wire and he has a striking necklace made of golden spiders to name just a few of the pieces. Most of the items found with the old lord were related to the sea in some way, like a large octopus breastplate and a model of a crab man. And there was a hoard of spondylus shells in the tomb. The shells actually originate in Ecuador but during the El Nino rains, they can wash ashore on the Peruvian coast. So in many pre-Spanish cultures in the Peruvian region, the coast and the sea were very important because the sea was not only the provider, but you know, because of the Los Ninos, it could also be a potential destroyer of their world. And this particular area of Peru sees an average precipitation of 25 millimeters of rain per year although the weather patterns of Los Niños could suddenly unleash torrential downpours that could terrify the locals, especially in ancient times. Right above the tomb of the Old Lord is evidence of extreme heavy rainfall, and this is accompanied by a layer of burnt material. And this could have been the locals lighting fires to pray for the rain to end. So a total of 14 tombs have been discovered since Dr. Alva started excavating in this area in 1987, with the latest tomb only having been discovered in 2007. That's really recent. This area is now 
often referred to as the Peruvian Valley of the Kings, although on a much, much smaller scale, of course. If you would like to accompany me on a two week trip to Egypt, where we will visit the actual real Valley of the Kings, among a lot of other ancient monuments, including a private visit to the Great Pyramid and a sunrise experience between the Sphinx's paws, then go to adeptexpeditions.com and book your spot. With the latest tomb only having been discovered in 2007, it seemed like this area has not given up all of its secrets. And who knows, we might actually have an actual Indiana Jones type of discovery coming up these days. Who knows what other riches lie hidden beneath the soil that get walked on nearly every day near Wakarajada. Only time will tell us. If you want to learn more about the Machi culture from Peru, I highly recommend watching the video on the Ancient Americas channel. Leave a comment there, tell him that you came from me and subscribe to him for more amazing videos. But with that said, if you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload or do an impromptu live stream. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner. Like you can just click on that and it will bring you to a fun playlist. Or you can click one of the links in the description down below or a video in the end card. I would like to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and my channel members. Your support to me is unwavering and I'm forever grateful. And yeah, this was the Lord of Sipan, the burial, the excavation and the things they found. I did speak quite a bit about owls today, which I hadn't expected before I started writing this script. And I have this small owl here, um, which is very convenient because I actually wanted to show the people who stick around until the end. Uh, something that I had placed on my body last Friday. <laughs> it's not in the best condition because it's healing and I did place my small owl there for fun. But I actually had an owl tattooed on me for my grandma. So I'm very happy with it. It's an actual piece of art. It's currently healing. I just put some cream on it but yeah the skin is letting loose which is normal but it's not pretty and um, yeah once it's healed I'll show it more on like a picture or something thank you so much for watching I enjoyed you being here and yeah go check out the video on the ancient Americas channel and check out adeptexpeditions.com if you want to join me on a two-week tour in Egypt which is the experience of a lifetime and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.